Hey everybody, it's Christopher Hunt here at the Colonian Ranch. Um, I wanted to make a quick video uh, regarding uh, a couple surrenders that we just took in about an hour ago. Um, it's a Salcutta tortoise, which is about 35 pounds, and also a male redfoot tortoise. Um, Salcutta's name is Ethel. Now I want to make it very, very clear before I go into this that um, what I discovered during my initial health assessment is, is no fault of the owner that surrendered it to me. Um, this tortoise was found wandering the streets um, some time back, and, and in order for it to be in this condition, it had to been going on since it was a hatchling for a very long time. So it was no fault of the, the surrendering owner, so I want to make that clear. With that being said, the surrendering owner did do the best that she could, and she did a great job in taking care of them while it was in her care, but this tortoise was already you know, big enough that the damage had already been done. So I'll show you what I found here. So this here is Ethel. This is a 35-pound uh, Salcutta tortoise that was just surrendered about an hour ago. And initially looking at it, it looks okay. You know, it has some pyramiding uh, here across its scutes, which, you know, for a captive-bred uh, Salcutta, one in captivity, that's, that's normal. You're going to find that. It's hard to find one with a smooth enough shell. So, you know, that's, that's to be expected. What I didn't expect is the shell. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not, but when I push, not even, I don't even have to push much, but the shell flexes. I don't know if the camera's picking up on this or not, but it flexes everywhere. Maybe I can do it this way. Let's see. I'm not even pressing hard. I don't know if you can see that. But the shell flexes anywhere that I push on it. Um, and of course, even back here, see if you can see this. Oh yeah, you can see that move. Yeah, and, and I'm not even pressing hard, you know. This is just my finger. And so it, oh, look at that. It, it, it flexes. So the poor thing, um, it has metabolic bone disease for sure. Its shell, while may seem pretty hard, it, it, it isn't actually. Um, and I want to show you the bottom as well, the plastron. All right, had to put the camera down for a moment and to, as I couldn't flip it with one hand. But even looking here, now look at that. Now that you can see. See how that moves? It's so easily flexible. And its whole shell flexes like that everywhere I press. So, you know, this tortoise um, definitely has metabolic bone disease, um, soft shell. I'm going to be giving it a regimen of um, liquid calcium orally. Um, and obviously it's going to get um, uh, natural sun when I can. As of right now, it's... It's cloudy and a little rainy, but it's in the 70s today. So I'll be giving it that and then um, extensive UVB as well, trying to help, you know, strengthen the shell as much as I can. It'll never be uh, perfect, but I can, I'm, I'm certain I can get it to harden um, to a degree. Um, looking at the eyes, the eyes also seem a little puffy. Um, so there could be a vitamin A deficiency. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but we're going to go to the vet. Every tortoise when I intake uh, gets a health, health assessment, and then I take them to the vet. Um, and once they get a clean bill of health, then I still go through my quarantine period just in case, and then I'll introduce them to the other tortoises. Um, now, looking at the uh, Howard, the uh, redfoot tortoise that I just got in, um, he actually seems to be pretty healthy. His, his shell is pretty strong. Um, I don't see any issues with the redfoot tortoise at all. Um, no concerns whatsoever. Uh, he looks active, he's healthy, he's eating well, and he's not overly pyramided. He has some, but that's to be expected with captive bred as well. So this is Howard. Yeah. Redfoot tortoise. He's active, been going around this enclosure all day today since he's been dropped off. It's definitely a male, um, very healthy. Very healthy and active. I'm, I'm happy with his um, assessment, uh, but again, he'll get a vet check as well. Now, the reason I wanted to make this video is one thing, and that's regarding the Salcata tortoise. So I want to make it clear because the previous owner did mention to me that um, he got plenty of sunlight in her uh, dining room or kitchen. I don't remember um, that uh, he would be in front of the doors, the sliding doors, and the sun would come in and he would bask. That's great. 
Um, I'm sure the, the sun felt good on his shell and it heated him up and raised his temperature, got his metabolism going, but it's not good for um, sunlight UVB, for a vitamin D3 synthesis um, conversion in the shell for calcium because uh, glass actually filters UVB. Now it doesn't filter UVA, which is what like plants need. That's why you can put a plant in the window and it grows just fine, it's happy. It doesn't need UVB, it needs UVA. That type of radiation goes through glass, but UVB doesn't, glass blocks it. Glass, plastic, those things block UVB. Um, so they actually, they do need to be outside. You know, they need to be outside, they need to have a UVB, UVB lamp. Um, again, this is no fault of the previous owner. This has been going on for a long time at the age of this tortoise, which isn't that old. It's probably 10, 15 years old, but it's been going on for quite some time. So I just want to make it clear, please, if you have a tortoise, if you keep it indoors, you, you can't give it sunlight through glass. It has to have direct UVB for up to 12 hours. And I would do no less than 12 hours, to be honest with you. I, I do follow a uh, circadian rhythm. So I, I follow the um, the patterns of the seasons and the sun. So as the days get shorter, I actually change the timers as well to keep that uh, circadian rhythm going uh, for all of my, my residents. But, you know, uh, you can keep it on for 12 hours a day. It's not going to hurt them. It's actually going to benefit them if you do. Um, they need that. And then when they can, they need to be outside. Even though it's cloudy right now, there is still plenty of UVB. He, he is soaking up that UVB right now. There is radiation, UVB radiation coming down all around us. Even though the sun's not shining directly on him, it's abundant here. It's, it's here. So he's benefiting from being outside and it's in the 70s. So every day until wintertime gets here, when it's, you know, in the 60s and 70s, I'm, I'm going to be bringing him outside um, and uh, getting plenty of sunlight. So again, thanks for watching. Um, I just wanted to put this out as like a little PSA um, for sunlight to work. It can't go through glass. So please know that if you're, if he's in the house and you have a turtle or a tortoise, that's, you know, you're like, Oh, the sunlight comes through a window. I've, I've heard that a lot for aquatic species. Oh, sunlight comes through the window and goes into his tank. doesn't count. If it goes through glass, it's filtering out that necessary UVB that they need and it doesn't work. So if you like this video, if you found it helpful, please like, and subscribe. And I'll be posting more as the time goes on. Thanks for watching.